An agreement for the exchange of information relating to tax matters was signed between the Bahamas and Malta yesterday. The signing took place in London. Signing for the Bahamas was High Commissioner to the United Kingdom, His Excellency Paul Farguson. The Bahamas has now concluded 29 agreements, thereby expanding its legal framework for the implementation of the agreed international standards for transparency and effective exchange of information. The Commonwealth of the Bahamas and Malta are both members of the organization for Economic Cooperation and Development Global Forum on Transparency and Exchange of Information. A welcome reception was held this week for the new Cuban ambassador to the Bahamas, His Excellency Ernesto Soberon Guzman at Super Club's Breezes Resort in Cable Beach. Other members of the diplomatic corps attended the reception to welcome the new ambassador to the Bahamas. This year, Cuba and the Bahamas are celebrating 39 years of bilateral relations. Foreign Affairs Minister, Deputy Prime Minister Brent Simonet and the new Cuban ambassador complemented each other on a strong bond. We um, signed a delimitation boundary agreement a, uh, a little while ago and the ambassador just informed me that it was uh, officially ratified in Cuba this week. So we're very pleased at that. Uh, we're looking forward to a number of other issues that we hope to deal with in terms of, of not only the, the technical agreement with regard to the, the two teachers we have here, um, also some, some medical issues and also probably some agricultural assistance too. We have to help one each other because this is, we are in the same ship and we have to work together to keep this ship floating, you know, because uh, this, uh, this is a crucial moment for the humanity and all of the countries need to help and work together in that moment. Former Foreign Affairs Minister, PLP Member of Parliament Fred Mitchell and Democratic National Alliance Leader Branville McCartney were also at that reception and say they are pleased with relations with Cuba. They're our neighbor and it's good for us to have good relationship and to work beneficially for the people of this region and for, for our countries and the people of our respective countries. We have a lot to offer each other and work together, so I'm looking forward to, to the relationship even getting better. Police arrested four people, two men and two women, after confiscating scores of counterfeit bags from the Market Street establishment today. ZNS News cameras were rolling as police loaded bags of what appeared to be counterfeit designer bags into their van before arresting the four people. Now the four were taken into custody around 3.30 this afternoon. Officials have been working to crack down on counterfeit item sales for years. Much of their focus has been on the downtown straw market. The Youth Business Skills Volunteer Program Junior Achievement is expanding its reach in the Bahamas. JA normally targets high school seniors, but the Executive Board announced on Thursday at the Ministry of Youth, Sports and Culture that two new modules will roll out at the end of the month for junior high and primary school students. JA Chairman Raymond Winder says having reached more than 40,000 students over its 32-year history in the Bahamas, JA has basically peaked at the senior level. The numbers were approxim approximating somewhere between 1,200 and 1,400 students annually. And we realized that, uh, you know, we wanted to have a greater impact and we wanted to increase the number of students that we were reaching in the program. And so we couldn't accomplish that under the current program. And so we had to uh, start additional programs, which Jay itself now offers well over 15, I don't know, 20 pro 25 different programs. Now the elementary students will participate in an abbreviated seven-week program. 400 students are already registered for the program, which will look at financial literacy, entrepreneurship, work readiness, and other areas. The junior high program will be twice as long and has nearly 1,200 participants signed up. Winder says there will be a special emphasis on ethics. Today, business ethics is designed to foster ethical decision-making in students as they prepare to enter the workforce. Students learn to recognize, analyze, and apply basic terminology, theories, and concepts common to the study of ethics. They explore their own ethical values and philosophy, establish ethical priorities, recognize key ethical issues, and learn to evaluate their decision-making process.
Welcome to tonight's edition of The Business Beat, sponsored by Royal Fidelity. Good evening, Bahamas. I'm Altafiz Munnings. Let's take a look at what's making business news today. The Japanese government and the Inter-American Development Bank approved a $765,000 loan Thursday, granting the Bahamas support for new and existing government programs designed to strengthen the country's framework of fiscal accountability. The funding consists of $612,000 provided by a Japanese special fund through the IDB and $153,000 in-kind local funding. State Minister of Finance Shivago Lang accepted the grant on behalf of the government. Well, the Inter-American Development Bank's Cultural Center has launched a call for proposals to fund small cultural development projects in Latin America and the Caribbean. Initiatives with financing needs between three and seven thousand dollars may be submitted. Applications must be submitted before January 31st to the IDB House on East Bay Street. You can also log on to www.iadb.org for proposal guidelines and more information. Tourism Director General David Johnson telling the local daily that the ongoing turmoil between Kersner International and their debt holders has little impact on resort bookings and visitor perception of the Bahamas. The Tourism DG told the local daily that Atlantis is still a very attractive venue for guests and many of them aren't even aware of what's going on behind the scenes. From the international business scene, Australia's job growth has dipped to its slowest pace in 19 years, raising fresh concerns about a slowdown in the country's economy. The total number of people employed in Australia grew by 25,900, or 0.2% last year. That's down from 3.3% in 2010. The fears were fanned further as the Australia Bureau of Statistics reported that the economy shed 29,300 jobs in December. And in regional business, the Hovensa Refinery, known as the Caribbean's largest oil refinery in St. Croix, the U.S. Virgin Islands, is to close down by mid-February because of reduced fuel demand and increased international competition. Losses at the 350,000 barrel a day facility have totaled $1.3 billion in the past three years. Remember, you can send us an email or join us on www.znsbahamas.com or become our friend on ZNS's official Facebook page. And that will end tonight's edition of the Business Beat, sponsored by Royal Fidelity. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Altavis Money.